Now that all is said and done concerning The Mandalorian Season 3, I can't help but feel that some creatives on the show are retrospectively contradicting fans' understandings of the first two seasons. Notably in regards to the character of Din Djarin, it just doesn't make sense to me. There were so many changes made in the production process and now they're looking at fans and saying that we were the ones in the wrong, that we should have seen it coming. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. The Mandalorian Season 3 brought up a lot of questions regarding the identity of Din Djarin, not in terms of his bloodline or anything like that, but more in regards to his role in this overarching story, because regardless of your thoughts on Season 3, you can't deny his role changed compared to the first two. In the eyes of many fans, the promise of his character was this lone bounty hunter making his way through the galaxy, and then after his mission to locate and bring in this mysterious child, he discovered the client and Dr. Pershing were going to use him for nefarious purposes, and he'd grown attached. They had started a long-lasting bond, and they would soon become father and son, so he rescues Grogu, and then the show became about both their adventures and returning Grogu to his kind, the Jedi. The plot of bringing Grogu back to the Jedi, which of course he rejected, he didn't stay with Luke very long, so he returned to Mando. Now, throughout all of that journey in Mando Season 1, Season 2, Book of Boba Fett, we did get a few very important cameos, and the appearances of Bo-Katan and Ahsoka were notable. We knew there was going to be a lot of connection to Star Wars Rebels, but going into Book of Boba Fett back in 2021, and also The Mandalorian Season 3, Din Djarin had the Darksaber, so many fans assumed he was going to be the one to unite Mandalore and lead their people. But it ended up being Bo-Katan who took that role, who took center stage in Season 3. Now, I've made arguments on both sides of this, I do understand why they chose to make that decision. And over the last week or so, we've heard comments by Pedro Pascal and Dave Filoni defending Bo-Katan and Katie Sackhoff, even if she acquired the Darksaber once again, this time it was destroyed. The Mandalorian Season 3 really made me love Bo. She underwent a very meaningful transformation, evolution, and I'm not going to lie to you, the first time we saw her in the Clone Wars and also in Star Wars Rebels, I was not too keen on her character. And you know, I might say the same thing about The Mandalorian Season 2, she was a great character but not my favourite. I genuinely believe they were going to build her up to be the antagonist of the third season, which they didn't do, and I think like so many other fans, we did debate prior to Season 3, was Din Djarin going to be the one to rule, or was it going to be Bo-Katan, Sabine Wren, or someone else? Well, it turns out Mandalorian or ended up a collective, but it was Bo who was front and centre in the most recent season. And that brings us on to today's video, because we've heard Pedro Pascal, Dave Filoni and a few others defend Bo taking centre stage. And now it's Jon Favreau's turn, because he says Din Djarin was not meant to be the Aragorn of the show. You'd be forgiven if you thought otherwise, because Din was really built to be that sort of character. So here's what Jon Favreau said, and this is taken from the official behind the scenes, the Disney gallery on season 3. They say Jon Favreau recently revealed that Din Djarin was never meant to be the Star Wars version of Aragorn from The Lord of the Rings. They say the third season of The Mandalorian shifted focus away from Din and Grogu and more towards Bo. Din's journey, which began as a quest for redemption, took unexpected turns. So here is the quote by Jon Favreau. I think people expected Mando. He had the sword, he's gonna take the throne. He's gonna change from a traveling bounty hunter to Aragorn or something. And you felt like, oh, that seems like where you're gonna go with it. But if you look at the clues, it hopefully makes you reach the conclusion of where we went. Because if you notice from the first time Din uses the Darksaber, it's heavy for him. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I think this explanation is absolutely terrible. This justification makes absolutely zero sense, because just look at Star Wars Rebels. Sabine did not struggle as much as Din when she was training under Kanan Jarrus, but she does make the remark, it's heavier than I thought. And then Kanan gives a very good canon explanation for why this is, and why it's normal for first-time wielders of the blade to find it heavy. He says, energy, your energy, constantly flows through the crystal. He explains to her that the energy that flows through generates the weight and tells her thoughts and actions guide the blade's power. It's someone's inner struggle that causes an outer struggle with the dark saber. Her thoughts flow through the crystal and become part of the blade. Dave Filoni in this episode was making a very good point, a lesson about kyber crystals and lightsabers, that they are living beings, your energy, and that is very important in Din Djarin's case too. And as Star Wars fans said at the time, Din just needs a bit of training, maybe from Sabine, if and when the two meet. But to use his lack of experience and his struggle with the Darksaber as a reason why he can't rule Mandalore is very weak in my mind. 
I'm sorry, but I just don't buy it. I mean, look at bo history. Prior to season 3, which I do admit was a fantastic story arc for her, she messed up a lot. So if anything, you can look back on her past and say those are reasons she shouldn't rule. Of course, in Season 3, we get more explanation as to what happened during the Night of a Thousand Tears, how bo was not entirely in the wrong, how she made tough decisions and sacrifices, and how the Empire deceived her. But certain things in the third season, like the technicality of how bo got the Darksaber, were rather controversial. Some fans said it was an easy cop-out. But I don't like the way Favreau uses the heaviness thing as a justification for why Din couldn't rule. And as I say, guys, I don't have an issue with any of the other characters. I love bo but it's just the way John is kind of making it seem like we shouldn't have expected it, because the importance of Din and Grogu was built up right from the start, and in season 3 they weren't in the spotlight, which is fine, but don't go and say, we should have seen it coming. John Favreau then goes on to say, quote, She coveted that Darksaber so much, but without thinking gives it back to him before he wakes up, and they're talking about the Minds of Mandalore scene with that creature. He finishes by saying, and so what many may have expected to be a showdown between the two, ends up with them both going for something very different, and working together, and ultimately, all of the Mandalorian groups coming together. So what do I make of this? Despite some grievances in Season 3, I generally had a lot of fun, there were some great moments, some great episodes, but even Jon Favreau said a few months ago he didn't know how Season 3 was going to end, they had different variants for the last scenes, and those got changed a lot in production, so for him to then go and say this was planned from the start, we should have seen it coming, I really don't buy that, because even though bo appears in season 2, without the context of the third season, and I guess a mention here and there in the Book of Boba Fett by the armorer, you don't see her becoming the ruler of Mantle once again as the logical progression, because they sold it to us as though bo was a failure, the reason for the purge, the night of a thousand tears, they really pins that on her. Many of us assumed, Din is going to be the one who picks up that mantle, he had the dark saber, he was a bit of an underdog, he was an orphan taken in by Death Watch, he was a solitary bounty hunter, he lived a rough life, and someone that on the face of things, on paper, is not the kind of person you think at first glance would have the qualities to rule Mandalore, to be suited for such a position of leadership, but that was the beauty of the evolution he underwent in the show, his confidence, his paternal skills, the way we as an audience grew with him, so we can be forgiven for assuming that Din was going to be that person, that Din was going to be the one to be the so-called Aragorn, I wouldn't go as far as saying that, but definitely the one person who was going to lead the rest of the Mandos, with Grogu by his side, one day destined to take the throne. All I'm saying is, I would have been one to say Din Djarin too. And so just to finish my dear friends, just a quick update on LEGO Star Wars, an upcoming Ahsoka set. We're still waiting for the final trailer, and just like so many other fans, I'm so hyped for the next piece of live action Star Wars. In the T6 shuttle set, alongside Sabine, her Yang, and Ahsoka as minifigures, we have the Inquisitor as well. What's he doing in this set? I'll let you speculate down below. If you enjoyed this video guys, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you, always.